During the 1960s, America was a hotbed of political as well as social activism, leaving the country in complete turmoil. From all of this activism, the Chicano movement arose and in the face of it was Cesar Chavez. Angered and fed up with the plethora of injustices they faced, Chicanos became inspired by the Black Panther movement to take back control of their identity. Chicano pride led to better working conditions and standard of living, but none of this would have never been possible if it weren't for Cesar Chavez. He experienced injustice very early in his life when his family lost their home in Arizona. His family was forced to move to California and work as farmhands. Growing up to migrant parents, he only spoke Spanish at home and was forced to speak English at school, even though he wasn't fluent in it. During that time period, many Ingles felt hostility towards Latinos, so speaking Spanish at school was against the rules. He would often be punished for doing so. Chavez only made it to the eighth grade because his father was hurt in an accident and he didn't want his mother to have to work in the fields. And in that short time he had been in school, he had attended over 37 elementary schools because his family had to move whenever there was an end of a growing season. This inequality he faced was not uncommon among Chicanos in that time period, which was why he felt it was important to unite farmhands and form a union. And all of Chavez's efforts would have gone unnoticed if it weren't for the help of Dolores Huerta. She was born in 1930 and spent most of her childhood in Stockton, California. Her father was a miner and her mother worked in a hotel that she often opened up to migrant workers. Dolores credits her mother as her inspiration due to com her compassion for others. She was very active in the community and organizations that encouraged diversity. As Dolores went on to high school and eventually college, she continued to give back to the community just like her mother. And when she finished school, she became a teacher. There, she saw her students come to school malnourished and poorly clothed. This was a tipping point that caused her to live a life fighting oppression and economic injustice. She began to work for the Community Service Organization, or CSO, in 1955, where she then met Cesar Chavez. Both, eventually, both of them realized that they had aspirations that were beyond what CSO had in mind. Before they organized the United Farmers Association in 1962, Mexican-American farmhands were underpaid and overworked. Chavez once said, We demand to be treated like the men we are. We are not slaves and we are not animals. In 1964, he was able to end the Bracero program, which prohibited Bracero workers from going on strike or negotiating their wages. In 1967, Chavez was able to lead a nationwide boycott which pressured growers to sign contracts with their employees. He helped get the respect and justice that farm workers deserved. Three years later, in 1970, the UFW finally got the recognition that they deserved. Workers were finally given healthcare programs and even a hiring hall, which put an end to the discrimination they faced from labor contractors when looking for work. Cesar and Dolores are an inspiration to many Chicano artists. There are many murals of them all across Southern California, and there are even some here in Chicago. There are several murals here in the Pilsen neighborhood dedicated to them. Despite the lack of funds and materials, artists are still able to create large murals and posters. Evidence of this is in an interview Luis Valdez, a Chicano playwright, did with the Los Angeles Times. He said, when, Ch when Chavez told me to make something out of nothing, he was articulating the essence of ch early Chicano art. In the mid to late 60s, there were no grants, no art degrees, just a burning need for artists to say something about themselves and their situation. One of, these, one of the artists to be inspired by them is Esther Hernandez. Growing up in the San Joaquin Valley to migrant farmhands, she experienced firsthand many of the injustices that people faced. She saw the rough working conditions her family members were forced to work in. And in 1975, while she was visiting her mother, she saw several newspaper clippings on the contamination of water in her hometown. It was called by DBCP, which is a pesticide that is commonly used on farms to protect crops from insects, and it had leached into their main water supply. This pesticide was actually banned in 1972, but because it wasn't a few years later when issues in their water supply arose. Her guilt for not speaking up for her people 
and rage caused by the injustices they faced inspired her to create Sun Mad. Sun Mad is a screen print created in 1982. It is primarily, primarily composed of a warm crimson color in the background, which is meant to symbolize anger and passion that Chicanos felt. There is a skeleton of a girl holding a large basket overflowing with repetitive green grapes. Behind her is a yellow geometric circle surrounding her. And in that circle, there is a white outline of another circle with repetitive white triangles surrounding it. They are used to represent the sun. And it says sun mad in large yellow letters. And below it in white, it says raisins unnaturally grown with herbicides, miticides, insecticides, and fungicides. The original image was modeled after sun-made raisins and was intended to be a commentary on the pesticides and brutal working conditions that farmhands were supposed to were forced to work in. Evidence of this is in the skull that was used to depict the sun-made girl. That skull resembles those from Dia de los Muertos, a popular Mexican holiday. Skulls are also prominent in Chicano art. The calavera is a symbol of resiliency leading back to the Aztecs. The Mexican community has resisted and persisted and will continue to do so for generations to come. The skeleton not only dramatizes the effects, but it also references the printmaker Jose Posada. According to the Sanford Library, he is the father of La Catrina, a high society skeleton woman that is often depicted in Dia de los Muertos. La Catrina was used to satirize the excess of the Mexican bourgeois society in the early 1900s during the Porfirio Diaz era, which is similar to Hernandez using the skeleton to satirize the sun-made girl. The depiction of a skeleton also adds shock value to the consumers of this product. The sun-made girl was a symbol of comfort and childhood, so to see her depicted as a skeleton was astonishing. Sunmade is actually one of Hernandez's most controversial works. And according to the Environmental Protection Agency, San Joaquin is actually one of the largest agricultural producers in the world, yet it is the most polluted in the U.S. They have high rates of asthma and water pollution due to the pesticides that were used by farmers. The poverty rate in San Joaquin is at 20.3%, which is higher than the nation's average at 20% at 12.7 as of 2016. And an economist from Harvard University stated that children of immigrants will earn 10 to 15% less than non-immigrant Americans. So my image that I created is called SunGrad and it is a collage made up of newspapers and magazines. The red background is made up of articles from OI newspaper about Donald Trump's threats to end DACA. I painted over the newspaper clippings with watercolors that were still visible, so the words were still visible underneath it. There is a yellow sign made up of multiple cutouts of Donald Trump that I found in Time magazine, and there's also a skeleton holding the there's also a skeleton inside of the sun holding a basket filled with grapes and wearing a graduation cap. My work is intended to be a modern version of Sun Mad, and I felt that a large problem immigrants face today is the end of DACA. Sungrad refers to the dreamers that were allowed to study and be able to graduate due to the Deferred Action Childhood Arrivals Program. I kept a skeleton from SunMad because of the resiliency it symbolizes, and I chose to replace the bonnet with a graduation cap because education is often attributed to success, and despite all the injustices that many immigrant students face, many are still able to succeed. And I chose to make the sun clippings of Donald Trump because he has intentions to end a program that helps thousands of people study and work in this country today. So Esther Hernandez still continues to use her art as a voice for those who cannot speak from themselves. Similar to how Dolores Huerta and other famous Chicano activists inspired her, she inspired, to, inspired me to use my voice as well.